Welcome to the next video. <coughs> in the previous video, I completed internet security. In this video, I want to go over disaster recovery. So, uh, let me click on this link here. Okay, right there. okay, so the first thing to take note of is this warning here. Now that you have a archive which is maintaining your permanent digital academic research record, um, you're going to be concerned about its sustainability. So, please make sure it is backed up and monitored correctly. Okay. Um, server backup strategies, it depends on whether you're using a virtual server or a bare metal server. If your server is virtualized, speak to your campus virtual systems administrator about the capacity to take snapshots of the system. If you have a virtualized system, uh, there's no need to carry on with any of the backup procedures. You may want to uh, set up a monitoring system, which I'll go through uh, later. Okay, if you have bare metal and uh, you're going to use bare metal server, uh, you're using a bare metal server and you want to back up to bare metal, um, it's a good idea to have two machines to back up to. Uh, just a note here. We tried virtual uh, virtual server, but it uh, suffered badly with performance, so we went to a, a bare metal machine. And things are much better now on the bare metal machine. We have much better performance. So what are the bare metal server requirements for backup? So we make sure that each of our servers is in a different geographical location. So if there's a fire in one building, um, we don't lose all the backups, because the two backup servers are in the same building. It is assumed that we will we'll be using the Ubuntu Alte software for the backup servers. And hopefully you'll find somebody with some good uh, Ubuntu Linux skills to help you set up the backup server. So this is what it looks like. There's a production server. And uh, the backup servers pull the content into, from the butter production server into their, um, into their systems. So. Um, let's see that in action, all right? Let's go and have a look at one of our um, backup servers. It should be uh, arc.bird. That's on forward slash backup PPC. I think that's what it is. No, uh, um, I'll just quickly pause here. So here's our backup server at this address Place the link up. it's a secure address um, you see HTTPS and forces backup here. so we are going to accept make an exception for that certificate and confirm the security exception and we log in with this username and then our password we have for the backups uh, so now there you see um, we have about one terabyte of backups, as you can see there. And uh, so, if we go to the host summary, you can see I have 144 backups and 210 incremental backups. And I'm backing up all these servers. There's a lot of journals and repository systems, etc., all backed up there. Um, and this is the uh, all the hosts where the host configs are set up. Um, this is where the global config is set up, and then we go back to the status there. And then here we can check out, uh, for example, scholar.sun to see the backups there. Uh, if we go to scholar.sun there, you can see I have uh, basically two weeks of backups there, and there I have. Uh, a full backup going to the end of March, beginning of um, April, middle of April, and then today. And the backup was the full backup was done today. It took 189 minutes the full backup. So if you want to see uh, what the backup looks like, you click on there, and you can see there is my backups. And then I also back up the home folder where the uh, DSpace application lives with 
cool, the asset stores, etc. So there's the asset store, and there's the uh, code, and then the folders, etc. So they're all fully backed up. Okay. So how do we set up something like this so that we have uh, uh, secure backups, reliable backups? Well, um, the first thing you have to do is uh, write a backup script on each server, and we'll call those the clients. I uh, have about 40 servers. And then you have to set up your primary backup server and your secondary backup server. And then both of those will uh, pull the backups into their uh, system. So let's have a look how we set up uh, the backup. So basically, uh, again, repeating architecture that it's in separate buildings, etc. Backup PC uses the what we call the rsync D method for pulling in backups from the backup server. So the first thing we have to do on the client server is set up the backup script and we set up a local daily backup first. And this is the script here, which you can copy and paste uh, if you type this command. So for example, um, if we go and look at our um, if we go and look at our development server uh, to see um, how this backup script works, log in there, and we'll have a look. So I'm going to log in. Okay, I'm going to put this on top. So let's have a look at that script. If you don't have one, it's just the same thing, it will create one. You copy and paste in there, and my password for that server. Now, as you can see, it's basically the same thing stretch this out for you so that you can see it. So there we go. Um, slightly different. So I'll just this just was written up quite a while ago. But basically the server host name uh, is required, it's but only variable. And then here um, the email address that the, the backup script report should go to. So there, um, this is one of my very first backup scripts. So there's repository.sun, and it backs up. I can tell real quickly uh, what it backs up. Um, okay, it's a backup folder. Uh, it makes a backup of the installed software. Um, it backs up the etc config folder. It backs up the root folder. It backs up the user local folder. Yeah, it does the important database backup. Uh, and that's it, very important. And then um, it sends out an email to root and the root sends to me. So there's a, uh, an example of how it's done and how it's been put into practice. Um, so each server must have one of those. Then you make the script executable uh, using that command. And then you can run the script like that. So let's have a look at what the backups look like, the backup folder looks like on our uh, development server. There you go, you see these the database backups, there are the database backups, there's the config, the config of the server backups, so if I have to restore the server I've got all the config files. There's all the software installed on the server, so if I have to restore the server I know it was installed on the software. Any funny stuff in the root folder is also backed up and any funny stuff in the user local folder is backed up. So this, these backups, this folder, uh, this folder here, var backup, is backed up to uh, the backup PC central server. Our primary backup server and the secondary backup server. So you remember when I looked at the folder structure, you saw these um, files. <coughs> now we have to tell the server to um, actually uh, run the um, uh, the backup nightly, the local backup nightly. So let's have a look what that looks like. So the local backup nightly, um, there it is. I'm just run it at midnight. 
um, like that, so it's the same. Or you can run it at 5 o'clock in the morning, it depends on you. So the backup runs daily, that's the point. On each server, the backup runs daily. Okay, so once you've got that script running on your local server, and it's doing the backups of the database, uh, it's doing the backups of the root folder, the user local folder, etc. Um, then you're ready to uh, um, enable synchronization to the backup server. So how do we sync this stuff up to the backup server? We, um, we do it by modifying this file, the rsync file. Um, and we tell it we want to run our backups as the root user. We want to back up that folder and we want to back up that folder. So that's why it's very important, as I said earlier, with the installation of the server, while we created a separate home partition. And this is one of the reasons here, it's very simple to back up. Um, back up the home partition and backs up everything for us. Okay, so once we've got that file done, like that, um, and there, okay, there's a, there's a nice example. There are the content of the file. Copy and paste that. Then you have to enable the rsync service. Okay, so we copy and paste that in there. Uh, so we have to enable the rsync service here, and we just change that to true. Okay, previously was false. Right. And save the file and exit the file. Then we restart the rsync service, and then we can test. Um, the icing service to see that it's seeing the backups as we want them to be seen and we just type that and then you can see our sync localized backup is returning all um, the correct parameters for the backup the files etc uh, another one is here to see uh, what um, home folder backups it will do and there you see, it's going to back up all those folders in the, the, home, in the, in the home directories. It's going to back up all those home directories. Now you're going to add a firewall rule to allow your backup server, this one, actually two firewall rules for each backup server. You say you're going, um, going to allow um, each backup server to be able to pull the backups from it. So you want two firewall rules for the two backup servers. So if we have a look at our um, firewall status, um, let's just enable it. I don't normally enable the uh, firewall, but just for you to show. So there I allow this machine with that IP address back up using port 873 and I allow this machine that IP address to back up. So those are my two uh, backup servers, those two IP addresses. So only those two machines may connect to port 873. Be very careful with this backup um, firewall. Make sure you only allow the two backup servers to um, pull the backups from your machine. Okay. Right, so um, now we've enabled, uh, we've uh, set up a local data backup and now we've enabled the uh, backup master server to connect to um, actually pull in the backups. Okay, so we have two backup servers. I have many production servers. You could actually have another one there and another one there, another one there and join all these lines together. Um, so I could have production times 20 up here, but the principle is the same. Uh, all those production uh, servers are backed up to two backup servers using the methodology. Right, so once you've got the, uh, all these production servers uh, configured with lo a local backup running, a local backup script running, and you've configured them to listen via rsync uh, to, to, to the main backup servers, then you can go and build these backup servers here, these two backup servers. So how do we build the backup servers? Well, the first thing you do is you install Ubuntu server on there, and then um, follow the instructions. Um, install the file world. So let's go and have a look at the backup server that we have, one of them. Um, let's clear this. So we're going to 
uh, log into one of our backup servers. Password that we use for that. Okay, so we're in one of our backup servers now. So if we have, uh, if we do a U, if you do U -F -W, now on the on the server side, you only allow clients um, to connect to your. Ah, <laughs> so I just have to enable it. So if we have a look at it, there's the rules there. So I would only allow each client to connect um, for each client which is going to be backed up by add a firewall. But because it's behind the campus firewall, it, I'm not too strict about it. But if you want very strict safety, I suggest do this. Go to firewall for every client server to connect allow them to connect to um, port 873 okay the next thing then on the backup server is to install this software backup PC and then you enable the web interface via that um, and then you follow these instructions I've already set up the backup server so if we go to EDC backup if you see there, you see it's already installed, and there's all the different machines with the config files that are um, busy backing up. Okay. So if we want to see um, how the Apache web server is going to handle this, we're going to have a look at this folder. Then there should be a backup PC config file. Um, see, let's have a look at conf available. Okay, so on the newest servers, it's um, yeah, this changes. Um, see the note below. Um, See now in the Apache Conf folder. It used to be the Apache Conf default. Uh, now it's con it's in the conf available folder. So please check this which folder, uh, but make sure that the Apache config file, uh, the backup PC uh, config file that's relative to Apache is available. So there there's the backup config file. Uh, but it points to etc apache.conf file in the, in the backup PC folder. Okay, so that's what this link basically does. It creates that link to um, the backup PC. So let me just uh, minimize that and log in here. Um, Let me just modify that to point correctly to the new backup location with Ubuntu 14.04. So the link now um, with 14.04 is there. Backuppc.conf is going to be uh, conf available and we're going to call it backup pc.conf so that's for 14.04 and this was for 12.04 so let me just make a little note that this is for Ubuntu 12.04 and this one here is for Ubuntu 14.04. Okay. 
Okay, let's save that, let's see what it looks like. There we go. Okay, let me just take that out there and swap this around. Let's see how it's probably. Uh, and then save that. And why did I make this note here? Okay. Um, may not be needed, but there, that, if that doesn't work, try this command here. There. 12 or 4, you uh, put that command. And then restart the Apache web server. And then create a password file. Like that, by typing that command. Uh, and then now you're ready to connect your backup server. As you saw there. So the important part of the configuration is to make sure, remember, we are our sync reports the backup folder and the home folder. We want to back those two up definitely. So when you do the config for a host, you make sure the transfer method is rsyncd um, and that you have these two rsyncd uh, share names um, ready to be backed up. So now in theory, uh, from the backup server, I should be able to rsync the repository server because I have a firewall rule allowing me to do that. And I should be able to check the home folder out. So there, so from the backup server, I can see these home folders, which means that I can back them up to this backup server. And I can see the backup folders. Remember, there's all the DSpace backup. So that is now synced into the backup server. So that's how you set up the uh, backup server, production side of the backup server. Okay, uh, I'm just going to minimize this and see uh, if we can go back to the, uh, if we can go back to the backup server uh, and uh, and we just demonstrate some stuff, uh, a, a particular host configuration, the important part. So let's go to important server, scholar.sub and when I click here on edit config, I just want to highlight here, this is the part here, the, the, the transfer part, this is a very important part. So there is the, uh, there's the two backups, backup and home, and the methodology is RSYNC, and the rest remains the same, nothing to be changed. Okay. So you may want to ask, okay, so we have these hosts, how do you add a new host? Well, that's very, sim very um, simple. You click on Edit Host here, and you scroll down to the bottom, you click on Add. Right. Yeah, you type in the host name that you want to backup, and the user that's going to do the backup, and normally root, and then you click Save, and that's it. That's how easy it is to add another backup to the system. And we're not going to do that, so I'm just going to go back out. Just make sure it's not there. All right, it's not there. So that's as easy as pie as it goes. Um, if you want to copy the configuration, say, for example, this is a journal configuration, and I'm doing another backup of a journal. When you type the add here, you um, type the host name you want to backup, and the host name you want to copy there and then again root in here. So, um, for example, Sagilis, I would type Sagilis there and I would type in the new journal name here and it would use the exact same configuration as Sagilis. So it makes it even easier to add other hosts because then you can you know, use the same configuration as previous hosts for the backup. Okay, so I'm um, just demonstrating the one backup server. We have another backup server somewhere else uh, that has a special login as well. Um, so I have um, completed um, uh, 
the requirements for the backup. I've got two backup servers. So if we go back, so I have a backup one and a backup two and several production servers that I'm backing up to. Right, uh, just to finish off, here is the documentation again to refer to. Uh, I hope this video is giving you uh, some good insight on, on how to build a, uh, a disaster recovery system. So one of the procedures I do in the morning is I just come in and check the backups and uh, see if any backups have failed, check the server why the backup failed and then keep things going. And that's where I'll end up and then I'll, in the next uh, video I will be uh, demonstrating how to monitor the servers, how to create a, a server monitoring dashboard. Uh, all the rage these days is web dashboards to see how things are being uh, used and monitored and tracked. One of the golden management tips is that if you cannot measure it, you cannot manage it. So yeah, we measure the performance and so that we can manage problems. And here we back up so we can manage big problems later on. Okay, that concludes my um, disaster recovery video. Thank you. Goodbye.